Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Growing Up Paranormal. My Paranormal Vlogs episode 4. Hi everybody. Welcome. I do two episodes a night, so yeah, I'm wearing the same thing because that's what I was wearing when I just did episode 3. <laughs> Hi everybody. So let's get comfy. Slip into something cozy. Dim the lights. Light some candles. Bring in the cat and dog. Pour yourself a drink. Get some snacks and get cozy and get ready for story time. So, if you are new to watching my paranormal vlogs, my Growing Up Paranormal series, then you better be watching my first, second, and third episode so that you can be caught up. So, on my last episode, I discussed how when it was, when I got a fever, how these really big fat people would squeeze their way in my room and try to smother me and try to stick a needle in my eye. I also discussed how we, I once heard this really loud banging noise in my house and nobody could find out where it was coming from, as well as um, a scream and a laugh and then like four long pieces of wood about this thick ended up on my front door. Anyway, that's when I was a little, that's when I was little and I had witnesses to that, so that was spooky as anything. And still can, ex can never explain what it was, why it was, who it was, <laughs> till this day. And that happened in the late 70s or mid 70s. So now to introduce you to my co-host who's been sitting here patiently waiting for me to announce him. This is Mr. Bones. For those of you who have watched episode one, two, and three, then you know Mr. Bones. He even had a whole background made up after him on episode three. So, Mr. Bones is going to come and make a few appearances before we begin. Okay, so, I don't know, can you hear the rain falling? I just have some background noise music, um, it's basically a nice thunderstorm. It actually looks like it's going to rain, but it hasn't rained yet outside. So I'm going to try to adjust this so you can see more of me, hello, I have a rest of a body, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this on, it's hard to know, it's opposite on the camera, so when I'm moving it this way, it's going this way, so I'm going to put it over here. Okay, so on episode four, let me check my notes. Okay, so let's begin. So this episode four, we're going to talk about how my TVs and radios used to turn off and on on their own from when I was really little. And I remember the TV set, like I'd be sleeping, be like on a Saturday morning, and you can hear like the Saturday morning cartoons <laughs> playing. Like I could hear what used to be on in the 70s, like mid, early 70s, anytime in the 70s, uh, Davy and Goliath, <laughs> and you can hear it, and Gumby, anybody remember that? And you would be able to hear that going on downstairs. And now nobody was up yet. It was early in the morning. When that stuff came on, I was like six or seven. And if it was the weekend, my father liked to sleep until at least eight o'clock. My mother would sleep a little later. So 
Now, if my sisters were all older than me, I was the youngest, so if they were working, they might be up and about, but nobody was downstairs, but typically everybody, because in the 70s, you had off on the weekends. They didn't work you 24-7. Uh, you actually had weekends off. So I remember hearing this going on. The TV would go on. Sometimes it would go on in the middle of the night, and then, you know, my father would be like, who turned the TV on? My father would be like, who turned the TV on, you know? And people like, I didn't do it. But you'd hear it. You'd hear it either in the middle of the night or early in the morning. And sometimes it would shut itself off. Now, TVs back in the day <laughs> had a button. You didn't have, I mean, some people have remote controls, but they had the buttons that you push in and you pull out. And I don't remember what brand it was. And I do remember, it was a big, you know, the big consoles. Does anybody out there remember the big console TVs that we used to have? I hope so. And it was on the, the ground. And it was like a big console with built-in speakers. Usually have some fancy material and wood all over the place. So we had one of those. And, I mean, you know, we used to, like, keep a plant or something on top of it. Not a real plant, because of water, but, you know, just like a nice floral arrangement my mother used to put on top of that. And I remember it used to turn off and on by itself whenever it wanted to. You just, like, you could be in the kitchen all of a sudden hear the TV would come on. Because back in the day, TVs went, like, they made a pop sound when it went on, and then you hear, like, this. And when you shut it off, you heard that. And it didn't make any sense. Nobody was doing it. So my father started to unplug the TV at night before. You know, once he was done watching TV for the night and everybody else went to bed, he's, he, was usually, he was usually the last one up. <laughs> my mother went to bed and, you know, all of us went to bed by then. And uh, he would go to bed after all of us went to sleep and then he would um, turn the TV off and he would unplug it so that it wouldn't turn off and on but guess what that didn't stop it and no there was no battery operated <laughs> you know it wasn't battery operated at all and I caught it and it was Gumby on and everything else and then my father this is impossible and then he'd go look, but it would be um, not plugged in. So, we don't know. And it was before cable and Wi-Fi and all that. It was before we even had HBO and the cable. This is from episode three. By then, we had cable. So, this is like the early 70s. I had to be like three, four, you know. And I remember maybe you know, 1972, 1973, and I remember that it was kicked on in the morning, and I'd hear it, and my father would be talking to my mother, how is this happening, blah, 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 and I don't know. So then there was a radio, my mother's sewing room. Now, if you've watched my other episodes, you know I lived in a big five-floor house. It was built for my parents. My parents were from Italy. And upstairs on the fifth floor were two rooms. One was a smaller room with my mother's sewing room. And then there was a bigger room with, like, it was double. It was, like, two rooms of one. And then there was a sun deck off of my mother's uh, sewing room with big side glass doors. So... Before we had the sun deck built, it was just a wall there with a window, and my mother had it has more like a, she had books in there, like a bookshelf with a bunch of books and some of her sewing stuff, and then there was a closet with all our games, and we used to have an attic by them, and then we had like a, you know, she'd be ironing, and I would sit, there were these two steps to go in to the room, and then you go down in the room. And I remember I'd sit on the little steps by the door and watch her ironing. And so I was like two or three years old, and or four. And I remember the radio. There was this like transistor radio. It was like white. It had a big dial, analog, you know, with the big red needle that went to all the stations and the big antenna. And I had that big brown dial. 
And I remember one day, you know, sometimes she would have that on while she was ironing and sewing or whatever. And then I remember one day that I would hear the radio going on upstairs and I thought my mother was upstairs. And she was nowhere to be found. I couldn't find her. And at the time, my oldest sister, Jay, I call my sister by their initials in these episodes because I don't think they want their names known. So they don't want to associate themselves with me. <laughs> no, they don't know. I just rather just keep names out of it. So my sister, Jay, the oldest, had her room. She had that whole big room at that time. And I had my little room uh, my sister N had my little room at this time and me and my sister P shared the medium room next to my little room on the third floor and my sister J had the fifth floor next to the sewing room so I thought it was my sister and I went in her room my sister J and it she wasn't there but the radio was on so I went all the way downstairs and I looked and and then I like ma do you have the you know I guess as little mommy, do you the radio on? I hear the radio. <laughs> and she was like, No, I have no, I don't have that on. Are you sure it's on? And I'll be like, Yeah, it's on. You know, I can hear it. So she would go and it would be off. Now, this would happen a lot. I would hear that radio and then nobody was there. So eventually, and it was sitting on the bookshelf that we had, like you walk into the door and to the left was a built-in bookshelf. The whole wall was one big bookshelf with bunches of books and knickknacks and, and the radio in the middle. And the rest of the room was taken by my mother's sewing stuff and sewing machines and ironing board. And I remember one day going in there and the radio kicked in and I'm like, looking at it and I'm like cut it out <laughs> so I was mad I'm like who's doing this who's putting the radio on because it was really frustrating and I didn't know who was putting the radio on so I would you know go to my mother and she's like it's not even plugged in because it had one of those where you could take the the cord and you could wrap it up and did the little flap that unsnapped and then you tuck the cord in and snap it back so it wasn't plugged in but then she's like wait a minute because that radio also had an alternative to put batteries in she's like maybe the batteries that are in there i think they took two or three double no oh, two or three d batteries you know the big fat batteries so she went in upstairs and looked at it and, you know, opened it up. There was no batteries inside. It was totally empty. So she's like, hmm, that's odd. She goes, oh, maybe your sisters are playing a game, you know, teasing you. So I didn't know, but I don't think so. And I used to have nightmares about like the radio turning on that radio to this day sometimes I'll have a dream about a radio that particular radio turning off and on and you know and I also think of the TV turning off and on and then the funny thing about well not funny but the TV actually caught on fire what happened was one day I used to I don't know if you remember the little um Oh, these little wooden dolls and not weebles remember weebles back in the 70s but this wasn't weebles these were the other ones and they had the mother the father and the boy and they were just like wooden figurines with like round heads <laughs> and they were made out of wood and they had like the school bus and the little house with the stairs and just all these oh and a boat I had that I forgot what they would call they weren't weebles um, if I find a picture, I'll insert it in here, <laughs> but I don't know if I can even find it. And I remember I loved those. I played with them. I had the little house and you open up the case and the little staircase and the school bus and I had all of that stuff in the boat. And I remember I would be playing, I always play with it in the family room and the TV was here. And then there was a space like where the couch was, there was like a little corner with a window and so when I was done playing rather than carrying it all the way up to my room on the fourth floor 
I would just pull my weevilers neat. I called them weevilers, even though they weren't weevils. And I'd lock the little house and shut it and put it all neatly on the side. Because if you didn't clean them after yourself, you'd get in big trouble in my house. So there was none of that. My parents were from Italy, strict Italian, and they wanted it clean and neat. So if I wanted to continue to play in the family room and have easy access to my toys, I had to keep it neat and clean. I need a drink. Did you get your drink and snacks? Are you too afraid to walk into the kitchen? Well, what are you waiting for? It's time to go into the kitchen and get your snack. We'll wait for you. Bones and I are waiting for you. We will. All right, he said he's going to hang out here and help me tell the story. So, um, I left my little toys, my little weeblers that I call them, and they were neatly put away and stacked on the side. My father didn't like it. He wanted everything spotless. My mother, she put up with a little more. And they're like, as long as you, you leave it all neat and you pack it up when you're not playing with it, I don't care, you know? But when we have company, you have to take it up to your room. So I brought it and neatly to the side of the couch and you didn't even know it was there. So I went out, I think with my sister N and her friend F. <laughs> I don't use names here. And I used to love hanging out with my sisters. They were all older than me. I was the youngest, and we'd go for a ride. And I had a lot of fun. And I was with them. And then, uh, well, well, now her friend F was going out with a fireman. Back in the day, there was the whole fire department used to come to my house. They loved my mother's cooking because she was from Italy. And they, my mother would feed the whole fire department. It was on Long Island. It was the Hicksville Fire Department. So they were all volunteer firefighters. They used to live at my house, go in my pool. In the summer, they were always in my pool. They were always eating my mother's cooking. I mean, they were over all the time. And they loved me because I was a little kid. And I used to love putting on a comic show and play and tell dirty jokes <laughs> and funny stupid kid jokes too but I love telling dirty jokes as a little kid they got a kick out of that and um, so now my sister's friend F was going out with a firefighter and my sister and she had a boyfriend but she hung out with the firefighters most and they were always over so this the house was so, and it was the fire, Hexville Fire Department wasn't far from where I lived, where I grew up. And so we were in the car driving around, and because she had, was going out with the firefighter, she had the scanner, and the scanner went off that there was um, a fire. And she gets the address, and she's like, that's your address. She goes to my sister, your house is on fire. And we're like, oh my God, step on it, go back. So I was like, oh, my weeblers. That's all I can think of, of course. But we didn't know what was so, you know, we didn't have cell phones. This is the 70s. So I'm all nervous. The only one home was my mother at the time. This was the daytime. I believe it was the weekend. And it was probably Saturday. It could, well, no, it had to be maybe Friday or Saturday. I don't know, but my father was working, so he wasn't even home. So where he was, I don't know. So it, it probably was a Friday, and my sisters and her friend F raced home. She had the firefighter light. She put it on her car. It was magnetic. She's like, let's go, and she stepped on it. And we hurried back, and she's running out of the car, and they're like, oh, your TV caught on fire. That TV that turned off and on. Mm -hmm. And my mother was like, she was doing her hair color, so she had like her hair and a hair color. And we lived on a corner, so we had that fire thing on the corner, on the big light pole that you just pull down and push a button. So she ran out with her hair color hair screaming, screaming, and then just ran to the pole and push, pushed it. I don't know if they still have those things, but 
when they got the address that it was our house, and since they lived at our house practically, the whole fire department came and they put out the fire. But would you believe it? The only thing that caught on fire was the TV. Now, keep in mind, my mother had a floral arrangement of dried flowers, not real ones. And in it was a cross from Palm Sunday that, you know, you, you get the palms and you make a cross. And we just ha had the house blessed by a priest because of me with all the crazy stuff I always said was going on. But like I said in episode one, apparently my sisters and my mother knew more than they told me, but I guess they didn't want to scare me any more than they should, and they didn't want to seem crazy, so just put it all on me. <laughs> so they never said anything. And anyway, so upstairs, oh, anyway, so it turned out that that didn't go on fire. The, nothing. And we had like a, a calendar hanging on the wall back then. You had those big paper calendars and the curtains right there because it was like catty corner uh, and the window was right here with the curtain. Nothing else. And uh, keep in mind the curtains back in the day were made out of fiberglass. Highly flammable. So, you know, it should, yeah, it should have been, it should have went up on, right? It should have went up on flames. Nothing went up in flames, but when the priest came, he blessed everything. He blessed that little palm made into a cross, and that's why my mother had put that in the floor arrangement on top of the TV because of the TV turning off and on, and that really did stop it temporarily from turning off and on. But I guess because they were mad because the cross was on there, they made the TV catch on fire. But I remember thinking my wheelers are probably burning because they were like right behind the side of the couch. Because really, I didn't know how bad the fire was. So we all ran in and luckily it was just the TV. Not, the carpet didn't catch on fire. Nothing caught on fire. None of the curtains. The sliding glass doors were on this side with other fiberglass curtains in the window. The curtains were... Nothing caught on fire. The whole floor arrangement, everything was intact. The only thing that kind of burnt up was the TV and the firefighters were there in a split second when they knew it was our house. Luckily, we weren't far away from the fire department. So yeah, so they were all there. My neighbor came over to calm my mother down and I was just glad my weebles, my weeblers were safe. And I remember my father goes, see, that's why I told you to put your toys away. Could have caught on fire. <laughs> so we got rid of that stupid TV and we got a new one, which of course my parents had the priest come over and bless that one so before it had a chance to do the turning off and on thing. And I don't remember if that one did. I could swear it did maybe twice, um, but I don't, I don't remember. I know that radio continued to do so. Uh, but then I think my parents had the priest bless that radio as well. Because I remember when he'd come over, he'd bring the holy water, and he'd have to go room to room and bless it everywhere. And I remember he, my mother would walk with him and take me, of course. But first, the first thing he would do is put the holy water on me. <laughs> I don't know what my father told him. And then would walk around the house doing room from room and room and then go around the house and do the outside. So I truly believe it had something to do with me. Because I was always the focus of that. And after that, uh, I don't know what happened to that radio. I don't know where it is. We had that for years, but after my parents died, you know, my sisters went through everything and packed it away. and. I'm going to put him down, he's going to sit. And, you know, you don't know what happens to stuff after that, so. Things get, you know, given away, and somebody has that somewhere. But I don't know if it was the radio itself and the TV or whoever was doing it. But that's all I know of those incidences. So yeah, that was kind of scary, and I don't know, uh, 
if you've had any of those incidents happening to you where your um, TVs go off and on and your stereos go off and on. So if you had, please leave a comment telling me if you had something similar to that. Maybe if it was a light. I know I don't remember if any lights went off and on, but I do remember the just the radio and the TV. As far as lights, I'm not really sure about that. And that was, you know, a spooky time. You know, so now you add that factor and you add the stuff that I told you about in episodes one and two and three. So yeah, I was, it's lucky I didn't have a nervous breakdown as a kid because I was scared. I mean, a lot of crazy stuff used to happen. <laughs> if it wasn't one thing, it was another. And when, just when, you know, some things would die down a little, two new things would start happening. So you just never knew. So, okay, well, I hope, so I hope you enjoyed episode four. It's a little short this time. Um, I will make the next one longer, episode five. So please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now hit the like button comment is to ask a question just say hello share my videos and check out my other videos on the channel also i do have other playlists if you'd like to check them out i do do diy crafts and diy uh, jewelry tutorials i made these earrings i made this necklace i don't know if you can see and I made these rings out of resin. I don't know if you can see this. I'm a little uh, seeing impaired when it comes to left and right on the camera. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy this. So tell me if you'd like me to do a whispering one where I just whisper. So I don't know. Do you like it if I just talk like this? It was a scary night. <laughs> just tell me um, and I hope you enjoy these and I hope you have fun with these and I will definitely be doing another one soon so have a good night and remember lock your front door shut your windows tight look under your bed for monsters and make sure when you hear that creaking in your closet Somebody's not in there. And when you're in the bathroom, open the shower curtains to take a peek and make sure there's something or someone not in there. So, have a good night. Me and Mr. Bones wish you a good night. And we hope that you're still around for episode. Uh -huh.